Hello, Rusty? Hello, Peter. Ah, perfect. We got each other. You're very good. Technology, ain't it grand? <laughs> Especially when it works well. Exactly. Are you ready to do this? Yes. This will be a 10-minute chat, and we shall start right now. When it comes to the post-pandemic workforce, one of the terms that is trending and we hear often these days is quiet quitting. The trend resonates with millennial and Gen Z employees fighting to rewrite the rules of the workplace from baby boomer and Gen X managers. Depending on whom you ask, quiet quitters are either setting healthy work-life boundaries or doing nothing more than just their basic job requirements. Unhappy workers are nothing new, but Oresti Diversa says the pandemic changed everything. Oresti is the author of Life Beyond the Pandemic, a practical new journey handbook, and he joins us via Zoom from New Jersey. Hi, Oresti. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me today, Peter. Thanks for being on the program with us. So where do you land on this issue of quiet quitting? Is it, as you say, or as I said earlier, uh, setting healthy work-life boundaries or doing nothing more than their basic job requirements? Well, I, I think we're, we're in the middle of a, I'm not going to say revolution, but I think we're, in, a, we're in, a, in the process of an evolution where work is being described differently in the newer generations than it was, let's say, in the baby boomers. The baby boomers accepted work as work. You know, you, you had to go to work, you did what the job required, and you sucked it up, good, bad, or indifferent. You did what it, what it required of you. And I think the younger generations are looking for more of a balance regarding, um, yes, working as well as doing, being happy in their work and, and, in, and their work making a difference uh, to themselves and I think uh, the world as a whole. But to be honest, doesn't every generation that comes in, including the baby boomers, uh, don't they change certain things in the way business is done? sometimes radically just by their numbers and in coming into the workforce? Yeah, well, that's why I, I called it more of an evolution than as opposed to a revolution. I, I think that, with, like, as you just mentioned, every generation adds their piece to it. So we evolve more to a, a healthy, hopefully a healthy balance of work and relaxation, a balanced professional life and balanced personal life. So when it comes to quiet quitting, which everyone's hearing about right now, um, is there a, a proper place or a proper way to uh, express that, uh, or can it sometimes go too far? Well, as anything, you know, it's all, again, it's always about balance, and balance is a tricky thing. Uh, real quickly, I, I like to discuss the pros and cons of quiet quitting. The pros are, you know, as an employee, uh, you work less. The cons are you, you earn less. The pro is you learn less. The con is you have less career growth. And finally, uh, the pro is you're just doing your basics, your, your job basics. And the con is you, you're getting less promotions. So it has its pros and cons. But at the end of the day, let's face it, where everyone, for the most part, goes to work to have a better life for themselves and their family and friends. Also, from a company perspective, isn't one of the things that a company has to do to continue? It's like a shark. It's got to keep swimming. It's got to keep growing. And if there's a stagnation, that could lead to death. Well, exactly, and you know, and and the other side of the equation, it's basically the it's basically the same coin with different sides. Uh, now let's let's real, let me discuss real quickly the employer side. The pro is that you pay employees less. The con is you get less productivity. The pro is you invest less in employees. The con is you get stunted organizational growth. Uh, the pro is you get a docile workforce. And the con is you get poor employee morale. I mean, let's face it. For the most part, organizations, that is, especially companies, are in the business of making profits. Even if it's a nonprofit, their goal is to have productivity and reach for certain goals. So companies are not in the business of staying stagnant. They're in the business of growing. So from both the employer and employee point of view, how do you maintain a healthy balance in so-called quiet quitting. Well, th that's one of the things I really urge employees to think about. It really should be a form of communication. You really need the communication. Why is 
the employee choosing to do quiet quitting. And really, we, we didn't, you know, let's just define quiet quitting real quickly. The person is not actually quitting. They're just doing the bare bones to do to keep their job. Now, the, the question is, why is the employee choosing to do that? Now, is it that the employer is not offering a challenging environment? Is it that the employer is not offering uh, a, 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 a channel for growth career-wise, financial-wise, promotion-wise? So the, the first thing I would always look at is, is communication and or lack of. It's interesting because you, you, you mentioned somebody working just doing the bare minimum, doing what's required and no more. Uh, back in the day, we used to refer to this as, as a negotiation tactic called work to rule. Yeah, I, I understand that. It, it's again, it, it's it's a delicate dance that goes back and forth between the employees, the workforce, and management. This, this is an old story that probably has not changed since biblical times. You know, and, and, and with the big companies, you have unions and and they negotiate with management. At the smaller level, it's it's this type of of behavior where you're just doing the bare minimum to get something. But to me, at the end of the day, it's a partnership. If if the employee employer relationship is not viewed as a partnership that's when the problems start do you see this as a flash in the pan or do you see this as a trend that will grow well i'm really hoping it's a flash in the pan and the flash was initiated the catalyst was initiated by the pandemic i think the pandemic started up a lot of things that that were there but just brought them to the to the surface you know, I, I really don't like to see uh, employees having any type of malice towards management uh, because that, that, that's not going to get anybody anywhere anytime fast, neither the employee workforce or the employers who hire them. Okay, so if you see it as a flash in the pan, do you, uh, when, when this flash subsides, do you see any good coming out of this whole situation of quiet quitting? Well, I'm, I'm really hoping to, to see that work life balance really improved uh we're seeing a movement towards that in england where they're seriously trying the four-day work week and they're they're, they're they're really testing it and putting it to the roll, rolling it over the fire to see if it's doable because at the end of the day it's really based on productivity are, are you as an employee producing and meeting the company's goals and objectives and it can it be done in in a manner that's productive also financially viable for the company. It's interesting because we're talking about something that when if you go back uh, a couple of generations before mine and yours, um, people were railing against the six-day work week. No, exactly. I mean, it, it, that's why I call it more of an evolution versus a revolution. I mean, let's face it. When, uh, companies are never happy. To, there's always more work to be done. You know, if you run your own business, you know, you'll know and, and understand there's always something to do. So obviously what we've learned over the years is that burnout, it does not help anyone. When, when you burn someone out, everyone loses. The company loses solid talent, uh, good employees and workers, and obviously the employee loses livelihood, quality of life, and really enjoying making a living. Now, I brought you onto this program because of your knowledge on this topic and the fact that you've also written a book, which is Life Beyond the Pandemic, a Practical New Journey Handbook. So in the brief minutes we have left, can you tell us a little bit about the book and, and why you felt it, it important to write it? Well, I, I wrote the book in, in when the pandemic first started because I was very concerned of all the people losing their livelihoods. And I define livelihoods as people losing their jobs and also small business owners losing their livelihoods. Uh, well, one of, the, one of the other things I do is I'm a interfaith minister, being an, an all-faith minister. And I believe we're all here for a reason and a purpose. So I wrote the book to give people a real-life blueprint um, to, to really find their life purpose while at the same time being financially proper, prosperous. Because I do believe we're all here for a reason and a purpose. And I do believe that the Creator wants us to be financially prosperous as well as prosperous in other aspects of our life. So in a way, um, for lack of a better term, the silver lining in the pandemic is the fact that some people discover that maybe the way they were going along in life wasn't necessarily for them. And because push came to shove, they found uh, new goals and, and new 
a path to follow that would be better suited for them? Yeah, I, I do believe, I, I think it was a, a time to pause, to have society pause as a whole, to say, what am I really doing with my life, and why am I really doing it? Now, all work is honorable. It doesn't matter if you work in a in a factory, as I have when I was younger, or, or you're doing uh, life-changing work as, as a cancer researcher. All work is... is is honorable, but but I but I think and I really believe people want to be associated with work that makes a difference to society and the world as a whole. Fascinating topic indeed. Again, your book is called "Life Beyond the Pandemic: A Practical New Journey Handbook." Oresti, thank you very very much for taking the time to be on the program with us. Thank you very much for having me, Peter, and have a good day. Excellent, sir. Good. I'm glad. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope your listeners got something out of it. Absolutely, great stuff. A new show comes out uh, every uh, week. Um, I, put, I put the show together on, on the weekend. It, it's for release on Monday. I have your email address, so I'll send you a link to the full show, plus also a link to a downloadable file of just the interview, and you can take that and do with whatever you want. Very good. Thank you once again, and I really appreciate you having me as a guest today. Thank you. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.